Hello friends, good morning. In my previous video lectures, I have explained high voltage testing of insulators, bushings, isolators, circuit breakers and cables. In this video lecture, I will explain high voltage testing of transformers. Transformer is one of the most expensive and important equipment in power system. If it is not suitably designed, its failure may cause a lengthy and costly outage. See, transformer is a costly equipment and very important equipment. If there is failure of the transformer, it causes huge financial loss as well as discontinuity of the power supply to the customer for relatively longer time. Therefore, it is very important to be cautious while designing its insulation so that it can withstand transient over voltages due to switching as well as lightning. Say in the switchyard as well as in the substation. Transformer is the first device basically especially in the substation which is subjected to the lightning stroke. So possibility of failure if it is not protected properly by the lightning arrestor, it is not coordinated with the operating time or spark over voltage of the lightning arrestor, then there is possibility of failure of the transformer. Now let us see what are the different tests performed on transformer. First is induced over voltage test. Transformer secondary is excited by high frequency AC in the range of 100 to 400 hertz to, to about twice the rated voltage. The insulation resistance strength can be checked by this test. Second is partial discharge test. It is performed to assess the magnitude of discharges and radio interference level. So whenever there is partial discharge, it creates the radio interference. Using noise comes that is in the range of radio frequency, so it causes radio interference. Transformer is connected as a test specimen and the discharge measurements are made. Location of the fault that is void or cavity and severity of fault is ascertained using the travelling wave theory technique. Measurements are to be made at all the terminals of the transformer. Insulation should be so designed that the discharge measurement should be much below the value of 10 to the power 4 pico pula. But this is the permissible maximum permissible value. Now let us see how impulse testing of the transformer is done. This is the electrical equivalent circuit of the transformer for impulse voltage testing. It is distributed RNC parameter because impulse voltage is a transient voltage. So it is performed to determine the ability of the insulation to withstand transient voltages. Impulse voltage is transient voltage that is suddenly rises to very high value and then slowly, relatively slowly it reduces. The equivalent circuit of the transformer winding for impulse testing is shown in the figure. This is the electrical equivalent circuit. Due to short rise time of the impulses, the voltage distribution along the winding is not uniform. This is because the d by dt is very less. Therefore, the voltage distribution in the winding is not uniform. Impulse voltage applied to the winding sets up an uneven voltage distribution and oscillatory voltage higher than the applied voltage because here it is capacitive network. So due to the presence of this capacitance, voltage increases along the winding. It becomes more than the applied voltage. Impulse testing of the transformer is done using both the full wave and the chopped wave of the standard impulse. Standard impulse means if it is Lightning impulse it is 1.250 microsecond. If it is switching impulse then it is 255 2500 microsecond. And chopped wave of the standard impulse is produced by a rod gap with a chopping time of 3 to 6 microseconds. I have already explained what is chopped impulse wave in the article on generation of high voltages. I had explained what is full wave and what is chopped wave. Now here chopped wave testing is also important because when lightning over voltage comes, then the lightning arrestor chops down, uh, lightning arrestor discharges the lightning over voltage. So, as a result, the residual voltage that is discharge voltage appears across the terminals of the transformer. So, after chopping, 
whatever voltage is coming that is necessary to measure or that it is necessary to test the insulation by that type of voltage wave hence chopped voltage wave of standard impulse is applied and this chopping is done by using a rod gap and chopping time is 3 to 6 microsecond to prevent large over voltages being induced in the winding not under test they are short circuited and connected to the ground if they are open circuited then voltage will be induced in those windings now let us see what is the procedure for impulse test the schematic diagram of the transformer connection for impulse test is shown in this figure this is the transformer now here it is the impulse generator output voltage it is shown in the form of capacitor this is rod gap it is triggered to apply the impulse voltage this is potential divider and this point is going to CRO low voltage arm of the potential divider is going to the CRO for recording of the impulse here it is for recording the impulse current and if we want to record the neutral current then we are using the neutral point and through cable we are giving this point to CRO for recording the neutral current the voltage and current waveforms are recorded during test so it is necessary to record the voltage as well as current waveform sometimes the transferred voltage is secondary and neutral current are also recorded so when we want to record the neutral current and the secondary current or secondary voltage we have to use DSO in this circuit also so here I have shown the neutral point recording of the neutral current Now let us see what are the steps involved in impulse testing of the transformer. First, application of impulse of magnitude 75% of the basic impulse level of the transformer under test is applied. So if BIL of the transformer is 1000 kV, then impulse voltage magnitude peak value should be 750 kV. And it is applied to the transformer under test. Then one full wave of 100% of BIL is applied. Two chopped wave of 115% of BIL are applied. One full wave of 100% BIL and one full wave of 75% of BIL is applied. During impulse testing, the fault can be located by general observation like noise in the tank or smoke or bubble in the breather. If such types of observations are there, it means the transformer has failed to withstand the applied impulses. If there is a fault, it appears on the oscilloscope as a partial or complete collapse of the applied voltage. Obviously, the voltage will collapse. Study of the waveform of the neutral current also indicates the type of the fault. If an arc occurs between the turns or from turn to the ground, a train of high frequency pulses are seen on the, on the oscilloscope and shape of the impulse wave also changes. So these all are the indications of the parts and their nature. If it is only a partial discharge, high frequency oscillations are observed but no change in wave shape occurs. Impulse strength of the transformer winding is same for either polarity of wave whether, whereas the flash over voltage for bushing is different for different polarity. It is the difference. So that is all about the high voltage testing of the transformer. Friends, if you feel this video lecture useful, then please like it, subscribe to my channel, ask your friends, colleagues and juniors to subscribe to my channel for video lectures on high voltage engineering and power system protection. If you want to make effective and efficient use of time, then read my book on time management. This is the link for the book. It is also given in the description box. I have launched a useful course for the students on Udemy. Title is Accelerate Your Learning by Power of Visualization. This course is very useful for the students who are preparing for entrance and competitive exams. This is the link for the course. It is also given in the description box. Thank you.